Salam alaikum and welcome my media savvy friends here to another hopefully captivating episode of um, the Funket Pod here with all things media, mindful media and communication. I'm still your host Sasha, you still know me, hopefully, didn't forget. And today we are embarking on a hopefully also somewhat accelerating journey through the realms of media literacy and critical thinking. We mentioned those terms a lot in the last episode already, so I figured it makes sense to dive a little bit deeper into those realms. So get ready to sharpen hopefully your only mental swords, yes, make laugh, not war. Um, unleash your inner detective, we did it last last time, so quick call back here. And then, of course, we're trying to decode hidden messages lurking in this sometimes a bit confusing media jungle. So, Let's buckle up, grab your thinking caps, and, well, let's embark on this mind-bending adventure. We're starting off with looking at how to unleash the power of media literacy today, okay? So if you just, if you just imagine, you're confronted with a, a barrage of news articles, right? Social media posts, advertisements, anything online. They're all vying for your attention. So media literacy is kind of like your compass when it comes to figuring out what you really want to spend your time on. If that compass guides you through the wilderness of, of information overload, if you will. It's like having a, like a trusty map that helps you to navigate this, this vast landscape of, of so many media messages out there. Okay, so let's, let's try to equip ourselves with the skills and techniques of media literacy so that we can be, I don't know, we have the new Indiana Jones out, right? So let's be that, that Indiana Jones of media literacy, if that makes sense. So we're trying to explore the importance of, well, understanding different media platforms, of course, their impact on messages and so on. But we'll also check out media theories, like, for example, the hypodermic needle theory, which suggests that media messages directly influence audiences. Okay, so that means the media content creator, producer sends a message and that message directly influences the way we think and we behave. That's not always true. That's one theory, okay? One theory that kind of influences the way media is being created and distributed. Okay, of course, you can now say, well, not every content I consume directly influences me. And that's good. You think about it, right? But so that's one theory that's out there. Another one would be the use and gratification theory, for example, that focuses on how individuals seek out specific media content to fulfill their own needs, right? So it says, well, you consume the content that makes you happy that make, gives you something either makes you happy makes you feel joy gives you some knowledge whatever you're looking for like that's, that's the use and gratification theory so you're not consuming the best content if there is such a thing as like an unbiased best content you consume the content that fulfills the needs that you have in that very moment okay so those are a few theories more more to come of course if you understand those theories right we can hopefully gain more insights into the ways like media messages are crafted and consumed and why they are crafted in a certain way. In addition, we also analyze, of course, how, how like algorithms and social media, for example, shape the news feed, um, how they expose us to, to personalized content, for example, and how we end up in potential echo chambers down the road. We're also going to discuss the concept of, of media ownership a little bit. Uh, again, I'm not going to make this a, a whole lecture, so if you're more interested in all those things, join my class. Um, but we also talk about like this a little bit, about like um, how media ownership influences the way information is presented and so on. Right? If you, exp ex well, well, you see how excited I am, I am. If we explore those theories, right, um, then we can hopefully also understand how media has been created. Now, I call this episode like literacy, media literacy, and critical thinking. Critical thinking is like a huge buzzword. We talked about it in the last episode a little bit as well, right? Like this 
the ultimate weapon um, in, in, in our intellectual arsenal, if you will. So the question although is what actually is critical thinking and how, how do we get it? Can we get it? And, so, and, and critical thinking is kind of like, it's kind of like flexing your mental muscles. Right? Like you got to strengthen your, your, how to call it, like your intellectual prowess, if you will. And so just like your workout in the gym, you got to work out your critical thinking skills. If you do that, like just like in the gym, it's going to be exhausting at points, but you're going to feel invigorated afterwards. And the same thing with this, those mental workouts, right? Practice critical thinking because this helps you to conquer the challenges of media manipulation. And that's good for you, right? So that's quite important, I think. So anytime you consume any kind of content, yeah, question it. Think about it. We talked in the last episode about agenda setting, for example. Think about what's the agenda of, of whoever created a piece of content. What are they trying to say? What do they want me to think? Yeah, if you do those mental exercises, you will get better at it. So if you look also like one example, are uh, what we call um, logical fallacies. Okay, logical fallacies are very commonly used in the media, such as hominem attacks, for example, or, or straw man arguments. If you understand that we see and are subject to those fallacies and what we also call cognitive biases, right, that influence our thinking, we're going to be more adept at recognizing when they are employed or when the agenda of the media producer is to manipulate or distract us from what might be actual arguments. And there are other theories that relate to this, like cognitive dissonance, for example, that helps to explain why, why people sometimes res resist changing their beliefs even when they're presented with contradictory evidence. Like, hey, I, I literally showed you right now why your argument cannot be valid. And yet, lots of people, sometimes ourselves maybe, if you think about it, we don't change our opinion or they don't change their opinion. No, no, this is what I believe. And my belief is stronger than your reasoning. <laughs> right, so that's, that's just a human thing. And so if you're aware of that, we can say, oh, okay, I know what's happening right now. Um, maybe it's not even like that this person is being mad, angry or whatever on purpose. It's just that their belief setting, um, that the cognitive dissonance theory is, is, is at work here and they're just not open to listening. Okay. So those are all a few theories slash approaches we have to think about when it comes to critical thinking. How do we critically think? Don't become um, someone that's that's steered by cognitive dissonance theory, for example. And be sure that you are aware of the cognitive biases that we all have. Understand that there are ominous attacks, for example, attack on someone's name, on someone's legitimacy, on someone's, I don't know, on, on, on someone's, um, yeah, skill set, um, authority, and so on. Understand that there are straw man arguments out there. I'm not saying everybody is using that, and but you got to understand that there are such things out there in order to make respective points when it comes back down to respective agendas. Okay, so being aware of that, thinking about it, questioning the content we're consuming helps us to you know, work out those critical thinking muscles that will be so important for us down the road. Because if we have those muscles, if we train those muscles, we can then decode the media messages and avoid manipulation. Yeah, once you mastered, so to speak, the art of media literacy and critical thinking, you can actually use the skill set and test it maybe even, right? So you're like, okay, well, I'm going to be like Sherlock Holmes right now. I'm going to try to decode all those different messages out there. And once I decode the messages, I can avoid manipulation. If I see those hidden agendas, the subtle tactics being used, those, those theories I mentioned earlier, then I know how to avoid them and how to see the real content behind it. Yeah, we see, for example, 
um, if you look at stories out there, we see like emotional appeals, for example. People like st or stories appealing to your emotions. Like, hey, don't you want your children to be safe? Let's block all the websites from whatever, right? Let's not have like... For example, Macron, right, in France, um, as he speaks there, like those, those the unrest in France, right, the demonstrations going wild. And he says it's because of computer games. Hey, yeah, let's ban all the computer games, for example, and, and emotional appeal. The bandwagon tactics, for example, um, they are all doing this. Let's do it too. Um, loaded language, right, as soon as something happens, those are terrorists, for example. Okay, so if you recognize those techniques, we can become more discerning consumers who are less susceptible to manipulation. I'm not, again, I'm not saying be against the information presented, just be aware how they are presented. Yeah, if someone, for example, is said to be a terrorist, maybe he, she, they are not, but what they're doing is still terrible, of course, right? So we have to differentiate. So if you know, oh, they're using loaded language right now to then maybe jump on a bandwagon, start an emotional appeal. Like, oh, I see what you're doing right now. You're just doing this to distract from the fact that your politics are failing, for example. Okay, so if you recognize those techniques, we will be more discerning consumers and hopefully also less susceptible to manipulation. All right, last episode, we also already talked about fact-checking, for example. This goes hand-in-hand -hand with what we are discussing today. I hope that makes sense, right? Fact-checking, verifying sources, critically evaluating credibility of the content, and so on, as all things we discussed in the past episode. So make sure that you connect everything, right, that we're doing. We're not just like, like hey, one episode about this, one episode about that. It, it of course, all very much belongs together here when we talk about mindful media consumption and communication. All right. So we talked now about a few theories. And if you also listened to last episode, we talked about cultivation theory there, for example, about agenda setting. So if you haven't, give it a listen because that you will see that this makes very much sense to what we discussed today. Now, if you all flexed your muscles and you reworked out those literacy skills and so on, then we can hopefully apply that in real life scenarios, right? And if you if you look at like different cases that could make sense, right? You, you could say, okay, for example, we could fact check viral claims, for example. We could identify bias in news reporting, for example. We could recognize manipulation in, in ad campaigns. So you can see this media literacy thing that we're discussing right now, right? Critical thinking can be applied to any area wherever there's there's media there's content so it's not just in the news it's in ads it's in social media it's, it's everywhere okay so having those muscles training those is really 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 crucial for mindful ways of consuming the media if you, if you look at those real life examples i just gave you like viral claims bias in the news manipulation and ad campaigns um, you hopefully get some more insights on how to actually navigate this complex world because you can see it really is everywhere, right? Manipulation agendas are everywhere. And if we understand that they are, then we can work with it. Right? Then we are not manipulated by just everybody out there. Okay, and then we will be more responsible consumers of information, as I mentioned in the intro. And then we can also see maybe media activism, for example, could actually work. Maybe... It, us as individuals, we could use our literacy skills and our critical thinking skills to, to actually challenge those common media narratives out there, those what now haters might call mainstream media narratives, right? We could, could maybe even advocate for, for more media accountability. We could promote social change if we understand how the media is manipulating us, everybody out there with all those things that I mentioned earlier. So if we have the appropriate literacy skills, critical thinking skills, we can challenge the status quo. And that can only be a good thing, can't it? So that's why I'm, as you can see from, or hear from my, my voice probably, that's why I'm so, so passionate about it. That's why my, my accent might shine through more in this episode than, than usually, just because I'm so 
pumped about it. And it's so important to me. Okay, so literacy, literacy, media literacy and critical thinking skills, I think, are buzzwords and everybody knows them, but no one's doing anything about it. So that's why I'm so adamant about those skills here. Okay, we need to, we need to work those out, make them stronger in ourselves and everybody that we care about, because then we can actually make a change. Okay, I sound very motivational speaker like right now. I apologize. <laughs> let's 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 move on to wrapping things up. Um, I don't want to be too much of a motivational speaker here today, but you can see how important it is to me. So we we're close to the end of the adventure of the day. Let's quickly reflect on the importance of media literacy and critical thinking. Um, as what I just said, it could help in building a media literacy media literacy society. I think. And so we got the power to make a difference, right? I just said it 10 seconds ago, individually and also collectively. So it's important to empower ourselves and also to contribute to a more hopefully informed and critically engaged society. But right? if more people do it like us, we have this more critically engaged society and then changes will, will happen, changes will come. So we got to figure out like how do we develop those literacy, literacy skills further within ourselves and others. Yeah, maybe liter literacy education programs could be a start, for example. Just participating in community discussions can be a good start. Yeah, promote literacy initiatives could be a good start. Yeah, promoting the concept of media literacy as like an, an important essential tool for civic engagement, for democratic participation, informed decision making. That's all good starting points. And if we have those, if we have literacy skills, critical thinking skills, we can share our knowledge and insights and then we can help others to also navigate this confusing media landscape and hopefully, just like us, become more discerning consumers of information. Right? So together we can actually build a media literate society that values critical thinking, responsible information sharing, and the pursuit of, of truth, if you will. And I know I sound a lot like Russell Brand right now, probably. <laughs> and I didn't even mean to, but you can just see that this literacy part and the critical thinking part are just that important to me because I think they're used too much as buzzwords and no one really knows what it really is and no one really cares about it. And that's one big problem in our generation and the generations to follow um, we're only about the short-term satisfaction on instagram and tiktok we don't care whether or not things are real or not real and i think that has to stop and i'm not saying tiktok and ig are bad i'm just saying consume it but in a media literate way so there's no reason to say no ban everything no have fun, enjoy, that's fantastic. Just do it in a media literate way. Be aware that most of the things you see on IG and TikTok are not true, are exaggerated, uh, are augmented, and are not real, are not the real life. And then, then it's okay. Then we can all have fun. Yeah, so media literacy and critical thinking are important for news consumption, but also for entertaining content, um, also in education. So work on those muscles. All right. That's enough with the motivational speaker. Uh, I leave the rest to Russell Brand. Uh, so thanks for joining me on today's episode. Maybe a little bit mind-bending. Um, again, not meaning to hate on every, everything and everybody. Just saying we need to be more literate when it comes to media consumption. Yeah. All right. Remember, the journey doesn't end here. Of course, it's up to each of us to continue honing those media literacy skills, sharpening the critical thinking skills, and then hopefully embrace the power of discernment in this media-saturated world that we inhabit. Okay, so let's be guardians of the truth. I like the term. You might think it's a bit exaggerated, but I just like the term, the guardians, not of the galaxy, but of truth, the seekers of knowledge, and hopefully we will champion critical inquiry with all those skills. If you think this episode is somewhat helpful, interesting, share it, like it would be cool, uh, leave, a, leave a review if you can, it would be fantastic. Um, well, until then, stay safe, take care, stay critically thinking, 
Um, keep your media literacy up. Stay safe. Um, we'll talk soon. Savadi Kappa.